Welcome everyone to Elemental Alchemy. I am very excited for all of you to be here and to gather together to usher in the next phase for Solab and for the Revolve platform, for the Spirologic model, for the Elemental models, for this new movement coming together around the elements of shared experience and Whatever mystery unfolds, I'm so ready for it. For so many years, holding this space for this model and this insight of this elemental consciousness of ourselves as elemental beings. And it's been 25 years since I wrote my first paper on the spirologic process and how important it was in our development, how it shows up again and again in developmental models. And it's been an amazing journey since then. I have spiraled into and out of all of the elements countless times, going through the highest highs and the deepest stuff I could imagine. And I can tell you that from experience, the process works. And it's interesting because it's a process that exists in our lives, no matter if you see it or not, if you name it or not. So what I want to do is give you an overview of what we're going to go through. I'm going to offer you a series of experience. I want to keep it balanced with a fair amount of background, but trying to keep that down, trying to keep it as experiential as possible. But I know for some of you, this is your first time encountering this elemental spiral process. And I just want to orient you to it and invite you into the logic of it and, and see where you can take it, what it becomes when you can see your life in it. Just as an overview, we're going to break this series up into eight sections. This section, which is an overview and just preparation. Then we're going to have a section two, which is, I call it the meta map. And that's where it's going to be a little bit more of some of the metaphysics involved. We're going to look into the metaphysics of the numbers one through five, for instance, and what it means in terms of this work, this model. We're going to look at the elements of consciousness. Um, I could talk forever on that. It's something that I love dearly, and I feel like I'm always just scratching the surface on. Yet, in reality, this entire process, this work, all of this is all around and because of and through consciousness. It's about psychonavigating consciousness in a way that is actually useful and helpful to connect in your own life, connect the dots, bring all the elements together, awaken that vital essence of your nature in and out of what they would call Maya world of of elemental consciousness back into your center of consciousness back out again. And that process of weaving back and forth in and out of these creative endeavors to be able to always come back to your center and come back to what we know is our unified self, our unitative self. This elemental model really does help with that. It's really interesting. So we're going to talk a bit about the elements of consciousness. Then we're going to talk a bit about the five elements. It's the four primary elements, fire, water, earth, and air. And that fifth element, that the center of it all, weaving it all together, the etheric self, the soul, the spirit, the I am, the infinite higher self, however you want to look at it. We're going to look a little bit at spirals and spiral dynamics to orient around why the spiral is important to understand as a concept when we're looking at personal development. We have the circle, we revolve, the platform's called revolve, but it's in bracket, the R, the evolve is the spiral. So there's a circle which synthesizes all of these elements of consciousness, a personal 360 of experience. Yet there's the spiral, which every time we come back to this place, no matter where it is, it's always a refining process. We're always back at it in a new way. So we're going to go into a bit of that just to be on the same page. Then I'm going to introduce a bit of the idea of the holons and the ideas of the Taurus and how this is a wonderful psycho spiritual model for the whole dynamic movement of spiraling into 
consciousness and spiraling back out into the world, spiraling into that omega point and spiraling out. And this constant movement that cells, atoms, bodies, solar systems, universes, it all has this toroidal movement to it. And our own personal development, our own consciousness is going through a toroidal process as well. And I'll talk about the reasons why I'm introducing that, not to make it overly complex, but if we simply looked at our lives as a bunch of spirals, it's interesting and it's certainly better than just a bunch of straight lines from the past to the future through the present, but it can be very two-dimensional, very three-dimensional at the most. And the idea of holons and the Taurus really does bring it to another level. It starts to introduce some 40 and beyond. Then in the Metamap section, we're going to wrap it up with a bit of talk about alchemy. It is an incredible art, and it has an incredible history, and it's still alive. I consider it the art of soul building. It predates chemistry, right? It's the science of looking at how elements interact with each other and how they go through these processes. As a psycho-spiritual process, it's looking at our own personal experiences and our own processes as part of nature. The uh, implicit idea is that we too, just like any element, just like any plant, any animal, we are engaging in this earth process. So there is this concordance between what's happening in the rest of nature and what's happening within us. And if we can look at nature as a model, we can reflect back on ourselves and see where that true where that we can see where that is true for ourselves as well and so much of life is really all about that isn't it it's always a process of having these inner experiences and looking or feeling or experiencing from the outside world where is that concordance where is that reflection back so that you we can work out our stuff, right? So there's always this back and forth, inner and outer. So we're going to go in a bit of that. And it wouldn't be a bad idea if we just brought up the idea of the Kabbalion. It's an incredible book. I like it for its brevity, in a sense, for what it does. The Kabbalion is looking at these eight principles, these eight laws of metaphysics that when you see it, you'll say, oh, yes, of course, these are all relevant. And you'll see that they're relevant in this work as well. All of it does pertain to this work. And it's a primer for our consciousness to have a more dynamic way of engaging this process so that we start to see our lives, our everyday lives, in this alchemical, magical, elemental way. Now, I can say from the start, One of the reasons why I think it's so beautiful and so important at this time and why it's so key at this time in human history in our civilization is we are gaining major traction technologically. Our creations are becoming increasingly sophisticated. And at some points, it feels a little Daedalus-like, like we're starting to create or we're worried about creating technologies that will end up Uh, trapping us and confining us like Daedalus and his son Icarus were trapped in his labyrinth that he had made. So in many ways, I feel like the we're Icarus in a sense that we came into a world that we didn't create, but we're part of it. None of us get to vote on technological advancement. So the main thing is there is a way out of it. And we're going to see how in the air realm, it's all about using that, our wonderful intellects and bringing together both freedom of intellect and of collective agreement. None of us have a full view of it. None of us have a full view of where we're going. We all have our ideas. And that's a part of the Revolve platform. And the idea of Soul Lab in general is none of us have the answers. Each of us has insights, experiences, and all of these key elements of these facets of human experience, we all have witnessed, we all have had experiences. So how do we make our way through this? In this work and in this platform, we endeavor to create a place where we create a common ground so that we can come together around these universal truths of our everyday experiences, and we can share our unique insights, our unique experiences. We can bring our authentic selves into this as we are who we are. 
any tribe that is sustainable is dependent on everyone in the tribe showing up with authenticity, being fully themselves, because nature thrives on diversity, humanity thrives on diversity. It's a way of nature. And so in this, I invite you, as we go along through this, to bring in your authenticity, to hear what it is that is being presented to you. And I would love for you to be able to see where it reflects in your life, how it shows up is really important. How you see these facets of reality are very important. They bring in a dimension that no one else has brought in. The more pixel points we have, the better the image of what's emerging from nature to show us the way. And so it's not a me thing, it's a we thing, right? It's a coming together around what we have experienced. So that's certainly what we're endeavoring to do here. We're going to go into each of the elements. We're going to start with fire. Then we're going to go through water. Then we're going to go through earth. Then we're going to go through air. And we're going to end in ether. And the final section is an overview of looking back at these elements and what your experiences were now that you're through this process. It's an interesting thing. There will be several people at least that have gone through it at least once or twice. They can tell you that at first it seems, okay, this is fire one, fire two, fire three. We're going to go through three phases of each element. It's like a beginning, middle, end, a cardinal fixed mutable. You don't need to know any of those terms, but there is this triadic process of an alchemy. They, in Western alchemy, they call it, it's a process of sulfur, salt, and mercury. Sulfur expands, salt contracts, and those two things, expansion and contraction, like a breath out and in, is life. But either one of them by themselves or neither one of them are life itself. It's just a movement. It's that third element, the mercurial, magical, hermetic, caduceus-like mercury that weaves salt and sulfur together, coming together and moving apart into this contractive, expansive breath of life, this dance of life. In the Vedic tradition, they have the gunas. You have raja, expansive. Tamas contracting, and sattvic, sattva, it's weaving those two together. And of course, in the Vedic tradition, rightfully, they're saying the key is to get beyond the gunas, to get beyond maya, this illusion of suffering, this illusion of life. And um, I agree with that, yet at the same time, I think from a shamanic perspective, there is a bit of pause there that we did come here. And there may be this possibility that we came here to have a very real experience and maybe we will learn something. And maybe if we really show up deeply here and we do jump into the fire as a good shaman would do, if we do dive into the world and be in it, but not of it, but be in it wholly, that if we can navigate between these elements of Maya, as they call them, the illusory world of elemental consciousness, we can always come back to the center and then move back and forth as a creative endeavor, as a creative process, so that hopefully we can make a difference in the world. I know for myself, I've seen before, I've seen after. I know we're going to, we're consciousness continues, we move on, we keep learning, we keep evolving. The scenery will change, the places will change, the dimensions will change. Yet here we are, we came here for a reason. And in that way, I honor what this earth experience brings. And central to all the shamanic traditions are the elements. And rightfully, because when you can drop into that love, that heart-centered presence, it is, it's curative, it's soul, it's heart coming from this place of heart and the belly and coming from and grounding ourselves into this world in a good way, rooting ourselves into this experience while we're also reaching for the highest highs and the widest wide is expand and rise and go deep. And the earth experience offers that and it is unique from any other dimension. So the elements for me are central. At first, it was a nice hypothesis. It seemed to square away my issues between clinical psychology, believe it or not, and 
metaphysics, alchemy, Jungian psychology, depth psychology, archetypal psychology. It actually opened astrology to me after 15 years of traveling through this, I finally realized it looks like an astrology wheel. All of it's alchemy. Anything that's worth its weight is worth it. Seeing that is worth doing has this elemental nature to it in some degree or other. So we're going to go through those. We'll go through the cardinal, cardinal fixed and mutable phases of each element. And there will be some questions and some exercises to help you have the experience because it is phenomenology. It isn't just about what you know, or what I know, it's about setting up this game so that we can experience what we don't know. This is a, this entire endeavor is a setup for inviting mystery to come in and we collectively hold that elemental witnessing space and simply receive. And then we can transmit what we're receiving and receive and allow for nature to, to teach us. Let that wisdom of nature emerge in our elements of consciousness, in our intuition, in our emotions, through our senses, through our mind and our thoughts. Nature is guiding us constantly through our consciousness, through these facets, these elements of consciousness. And this is about remembering that and reconnecting in a sacred way, in a good way, just simply tuning in and reaffirming that connection, that coherence, that resonance with these facets of our human experience, simple as that, will recalibrate our consciousness to have that 360, that higher consciousness, so that we know why we're here, how we're going to do what we're here to do, and what needs to be done. So I'm very excited about this, and it is a setup for me to learn from people much wiser than myself. All of this as part of my incurable curiosity. I want to learn. I'm here to learn. I think that's a Sagittarian thing, but it's certainly, it's, I love learning and I love learning about infinite dimensions of metaphysical, spiritual, human, soulful, shamanic, all of it. So bring it in, bring your truth in and know that you're among brothers and sisters here Know that you're among friends. This is an invitation for authenticity and for witnessing and sharing and growing together as, a, as elemental beings and as people who want to make a difference in the world. Before the next video, there is a personal assessment tool. And I love this. I created it 10 years ago. And when you take it, know that it's state-driven, meaning it's where you are in this moment. States determine reality. If you're in a good state of mind, you see the world in a good way. If you're in a bad state of mind, you see the world in a bad state of mind or in a bad way. And so what this is going to help, even before you come to understand the elemental model, it will give you an insight into your own elemental construct at this moment. It's pretty cool. It's beautiful too. My friend Renu in California did this and she's just phenomenal. And so take this and if you would screenshot your results and add them to the community. I have done it with all my clients and I've done pre and post sessions where we did the personal assessment before and we did it right after to our journey. And it's remarkable. So it is very sensitive and mercurial. It can pick up shifts in your state of consciousness that will impress you, will show you how liquid in some sense your, our conscious states can be if we are willing to look at these facets of experience. There's magic in that, just being able to hold a moment for your experience rather than just taking it all as implicit chaos. What I love about alchemy is it life can seem chaotic and chaos is a major part of it. As you'll l learn in the Kabbalion, this idea of paradox and parallels, but paradox in the sense that as much as it is as our world is chaos, it's also simultaneously, concurrently, it is order. And a good spiritual tool will help you see the order. And the medicine wheels, the mandalas, their power is to remind us to see, it's like a, holding a sacred prism up to the chaotic world 
And as you look through, all of a sudden it's order. It's beautiful. And you can see the truth of that. It's always there. So I hope you see this in this work. The personal assessment will simply show you where you're at. And then the next video that we're going to go to is just a little bit about the phenomenology of consciousness, because that's what this whole gig is about. So I just wanted to have that intro prep for that. And then we'll go into the section two. All right. Thank you guys for joining in. Please leave any comments below. Any questions you have, text me, call me, let me know. I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are. And if, if any of this is, you need any more information, I'm trying not to bring too much information in, but if you need more information, I have an infinite amount of it for you. So just let me know what you need and I will be here for you. And I'm grateful and honored for each of you for being willing to hold space for yourself, for your experience, and also for this project as it's starting to emerge with this beautiful team that's helping to bring this into the world. And I know that you being a part of this experience is going to help make it what it can be. And so I welcome in all your insights, all your ideas, all of your concerns, everything. This is a time to really bring that authenticity and honesty into it and know that you're doing it for yourself. Hopefully that in mind, I will see you in video number two. Take care.